Hi everyone, welcome back to Audit Decoded by Mayuri. This is the channel where we simplify complex audit, SOCs, cybersecurity, and compliance topics with real-world insights and practical examples. Today's video is an interview goldmine. We are going to tackle the top 10 ITGC questions with answers, explained in depth with real examples from ERPs like SAP and Oracle. If you are preparing for an internal audit, SOX, or risk consulting interview or just want to deepen your audit knowledge, this video will give you a powerful edge. Let's begin. First, what are IT general controls and why are they important? IT general controls or ITGCs are the backbone of an organization's IT environment. They are the policies, procedures, and activities that ensure the integrity, availability, and confidentiality of data and systems. Think of ITGCs as the plumbing behind the scenes not directly tied to business processes, but supporting everything from your financial reports to your automated controls. ITGCs broadly cover access management, change management, IT operations, and security controls. Why are they important? If your ITGCs are weak, it does not matter how good your application level controls are. Without strong ITGCs, data integrity cannot be trusted, and SOX compliance could be at risk. For example, if anyone can access SE37 in SAP and run or edit critical function modules without restriction, your system could be exploited, leading to unauthorized postings or data extraction. Second, what is the role of ITGCs in SOX compliance? Under the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, Section 404, management must ensure the accuracy of financial reporting. Since most financial reporting relies on IT systems, strong ITGCs are essential to safeguard data, systems, and reporting integrity. ITGCs support SOX in key ways, control over financial systems, prevention of fraud and errors, and support for ITAX. For example, in Oracle Financials, imagine an accountant has access to both create vendors and process payments. Without ITGCs enforcing segregation of duties and access review, this user could make fake vendors and send payments to themselves. Third, what are the major components of ITGC? There are four main components, access management, change management, IT operations, and backup and recovery. Access management includes user provisioning and deprovisioning, role-based access, periodic user access reviews, segregation of duties enforcement, and privileged access control. In SAP, this means reviewing users assigned SAP All or SUser All. Change management covers approval and testing of system changes, movement from development to test to production, version control, and emergency change handling. In Oracle, this could involve using change control boards to approve changes in custom scripts. IT operations involves batch job monitoring, incident management, system uptime monitoring, and job failure handling. For example, if an automated payroll job fails, alerts should trigger, and logs should be reviewed for failure reasons. Backup and recovery includes regular backups, backup log review, off-site or cloud backup, and disaster recovery planning and testing. In a real case, a disaster recovery test might involve restoring Oracle database backups to a test server to validate recovery objectives. Fourth, how do you test user access controls? Testing user access controls is one of the most critical audit procedures. It ensures that only authorized individuals have access to systems and data, and their access is aligned with their job responsibilities. Key testing areas include provisioning controls, deprovisioning controls, access review, segregation of duties analysis, and privileged access. For example, in SAP, you would extract a list of users, filter on critical roles, check if former employees still have active accounts, and review audit trails for privileged account usage. A red flag example, a terminated user still had access to SAP after 15 days and posted journal entries. A major SOX violation. Fifth, what is segregation of duties and how do you assess it? Segregation of duties, or SOD, ensures that no one individual has control over all phases of a critical transaction, reducing the risk of fraud or unintentional error. Common SOD conflicts include creating vendors and processing payments, raising and approving purchase orders, maintaining the general ledger and approving journal entries, and creating users and assigning roles at the IT level. Assessment steps include identifying key functions and risks, mapping roles to users in SAP or Oracle, running a conflict matrix using SOD tools, and validating compensating controls. For example, in Oracle, if a user has access to both AP vendors and AP payments responsibilities, you would run a query to list all users with both, investigate why, and check for mitigating controls like supervisor review or audit logs. Sixth, 
What is change management and how is it audited? Change management controls how system configurations, codes, or infrastructure are changed to prevent unauthorized, untested, or unintended impacts. Audit focus areas include change request initiation, approval process, testing evidence, migration to production, segregation of roles, and emergency changes. In SAP, you might use Solution Manager's Charm tool to manage changes and check change document logs. In Oracle, you might track change records in JIRA or ServiceNow and validate ticket approval, user acceptance testing screenshots, and migration logs. Seventh, what are common ITGC deficiencies found during audits? Common deficiencies include terminated users not removed timely, lack of access reviews, developers with access to production, missing approval or testing and change requests, no disaster recovery testing, failed backups not investigated, password policy not enforced, and shared admin accounts. For example, an SAP basis team had shared login credentials for a privileged ID, no accountability, no traceability, and the control failed. The impact? A material control weakness in SOX if tied to a financial reporting system. Eighth, how do you audit backup and recovery controls? Auditing backup and recovery ensures business continuity and data integrity in the event of failure, corruption, or disasters. Audit steps include checking backup schedules, reviewing backup logs, restoration testing, off-site or cloud storage, and disaster recovery testing. For example, in Oracle, you would ask for RMAN backup logs, verify status and timing, request proof of restoration test, and review disaster recovery test summary reports. Ninth, what is privileged access and how should it be controlled? Privileged access refers to elevated permissions that allow users to make system-wide changes, bypass security, or override application logic. These include SAP All-in SAP, System or CS in Oracle Database, Root in Unix or Linux, and Domain Admin in Windows Active Directory. Control procedures include justification and documented approval for privileged access, use of break glass or fire call IDs with auto expiry, monitoring logs of usage, periodic reviews of privileged accounts, and avoiding generic shared IDs. For example, in SAP, User Z admin is granted SAP all temporarily via Firefighter ID, and all actions are logged and reviewed weekly by the controller. Audit tip, always check logs. Privilege without monitoring is high risk. Tenth, what is the difference between ITGC and ITAC with examples? ITGCs are support level controls that apply across systems and ensure a secure, stable IT environment. ITACs are application-specific controls embedded within applications to ensure the accuracy of data processing. Examples of ITGCs include access control, change management, and backup. Examples of ITACs include three-way match, field validation, and duplicate invoice check. Think of ITGCs as the operating system and ITACs as the apps running on top of it. For example, in SAP, restricting SE38 to prevent unauthorized program execution is an ITCC, while a three-way match in the materials management module is an ITAC. If ITGC fails, users may bypass ITACs by writing custom programs. Audit implication. If ITGCs are weak, auditors may not rely on ITACs, increasing audit scope, effort, and possibly leading to deficiencies. And that brings us to the end of this deep dive session on the top 10 ITGC questions, with answers covering everything from access controls to privileged users, segregation of duties, and ERP examples. If you found this video valuable, please give it a like, subscribe to Audit Decoded by Mayuri and comment below with topics you would like next maybe SOC1, COBIT, or real SAP audit walkthroughs. This script is especially helpful for SOX auditors, risk consultants, internal auditors, ITGC testers, and audit job seekers. Thanks for watching, and remember, controls that are not tested are just hopes. See you in the next video. Credits, script, and narration by Mayuri for Audit Decoded by Mayuri.